Welcome to Tobar's Realm. Today I am going to start the process of repurposing this old writing desk. It's, I have no idea how old it is, but it's been in our family for a long time and I've had it for a while and I just don't have anything to do with it. And I don't want to go like throw it away. I don't want to give it away. So I'm going to repurpose it into a treasure chest, like a pirate treasure chest. And this is pretty cool because it's got like the leather on top. It's gotten dusty because I was sanding in here earlier. But so what I'm thinking is, is that these drawers have a real nice curve to them already. But I think if I adjust that angle a little and then attach the other side to it, I can make that kind of traditional curved top on a treasure chest. And look here, we even got a nerf, nerf dart in there. So, first thing is going to be to kind of disassemble this thing. I'm hoping maybe I can use the existing, well, I don't know, we'll see. But... All right, well, I took all the drawers off, got them all piled up there. I'll deal with those after. You can see there's the one that was in the middle of the top and then three that look like, well, they're not quite the same size and then one double. So got it up on the workbench, put it up on its top upside down and I'm just gonna start taking it apart. It's like screws here. I don't know if these will be glued on, but I can tell some of these are glued, but let's try and take it apart without damaging it. Some nails. All right, so I got the two sides detached from the top and from each other. Just pulled these out. And so I'll get the nails out of it. And I've just been throwing them in one of the drawers here, saving up the parts and pieces. So get that top out of the way and start disassembling each side. Well, I'm making pretty good progress. Got one side of one side almost completely taken apart. Got a pretty big pile of parts building up here. Here's the other side, and then here's the the main part of the other side. But I did end up breaking this off. There was a nail holding it in I didn't realize was there. But I think I can glue it if I need it. Well, I got the base all disassembled. I've just been sticking it in the empty drawers here, but I'm going to have to transfer that to this box so that I can disassemble the drawers. Got a bunch of the paneling and um, the top piece is leaning up there and the, over in the other place there. So transfer this to the box and start disassembling those drawers. Well that first drawer came apart pretty easily. I just had to chisel off some little pieces that were glued on the bottom of it. Um, once I got those off, I uh, just used a rubber mallet to tap these off of the corners. So that's good. And then this is what's going to be used for the top. It's the front of those drawers. If I cut them so the angles are right, that'll be that 
curved lid. So, continue on with these drawers. I got the desk completely disassembled. So I've been working on how I want to cut these desk drawer fronts to make the peak of the lid of this treasure chest. And I figured that this curve is three inches difference on each side. So I just cut a little block so that when I cut on the miter saw, this will be elevated three inches so it'll cut a square edge and then I just measured in an inch and a half from the end to where I want it to end here and when I cut it I'll just put that little three inch block and then that'll give me a horizontal cut there I already got this one and that looks pretty square it's interesting when you cut it you can see how they made it made out of a bunch of smaller strips this one's got a bunch maybe they had to do that for when they bent it I don't know so I'm gonna continue that and hopefully translate that over to the larger drawer fronts those are the smallest ones so that's where I'm at so I'm still working on cutting these drawer faces so they can be the top of the treasure chest and I think it's actually a mistake to use measurements to cut it because each one is slightly unique so I think I'm just going to have to use this one as a template because I measured these the same way and then I cut them and they're like an eighth of an inch off. So when I go and do the next one, I'm just going to go off of the dimensions of this one because the measurements to the end are slightly different. The, I cut this piece right where the beveling started here and all of them are slightly unique so I'm just going to use this as a pattern to be the right length for the rest of them so I'm going to take this back and cut that little bit off there we go now the edges are even Well, I got all those drawer fronts um, cut so they are ready to be move on to the next stage of making the lid. This is that drawer that was a double one that was already attached together. So this is a, one of the single drawers that is the same dimensions as the middle of this one. So what I'm going to do next is take the partitions that were between the drawers and cut them so that I can sandwich them in between there to match this one. Here's a piece of one of those. And I started by cutting this one. It's just a rough cut. I will end up going back and finishing it out. And decided I'm not going to use the two small drawers because I'd have to put one on each side of the lid and uh, there I think it would just it wouldn't match so I think I'm gonna just skip those but that's pretty good width it's about mm, 18 inches I would say Let's see. Yeah, pretty close to 18 inches. And then I'll put a piece on the outside and a piece on the front and back. So that'll bulk it up almost two inches. So I'm just going to continue on. I don't know if I should glue this yet. I don't think so. 
but I'm going to start making this for the other side. Here's a couple that were broken when I took it apart. I don't think I'll need those, but I did keep the piece that broke off so I could glue it back on if I had to. I could clamp this back together if I have to use it, but I think I got enough from the other other ones. I only need two, so if I got one more, that should be enough. Something that I've been thinking about is I think I want to put like some rivets through this and like attach some sort of I don't know, washer or coin something. But those holes are really big. They're probably three eighths. No. Yeah, three eighths. Larger than one quarter inch. So I'm wondering if maybe I should just put a dowel in it, glue a dowel in it, and then re-drill it a little bit smaller, because that's a little too big. We'll see what happens. So here's what I was talking about, about make, cutting this down to fit between the slats of the lid. So there's that partition between the drawers. Just got it basically put where I want it, so that seam will be in the right spot. So I'll mark this, cut it off, bring it back, put it where it belongs, then mark the other side, cut that. Draw the line, use the reciprocating saw to just kind of rough cut it out of there, like the uh, other one I already did. All right, got that piece rough cut out. That's pretty close. I'll finalize the seam between these after I glue it together and I'll just use a belt sander with like, I don't know, what is it, like 100 grit or something like that just to chew that stuff out of there. And then I'll end up sanding it down more finely. But that's how I'm doing this. All right, so I'm just preparing to glue these together. So I just sanded that and then I'll be sanding this one. These are those pieces I just rough cut out. So I'll get that squared away and clamped. And I'll just do a couple at a time with these smaller clamps. And then I'll use the big clamps on them once that gets too big for these. So here's that drawer that was the large one that was already put together and I glued this one together so now it's too big for those smaller clamps so I got these big ones I'm going to do and uh, that'll be half of the lid. Alright, well this one should be done gluing. Got one other one that's done, so I gotta continue working on this one. And, uh, yeah. Well, I finished gluing, and I just got it stuck up on that little block kind of sizing it up here. I think it kind of looks like a turtle shell. But so I think the next thing I'm going to do is attach these sides together. It's pretty close. There definitely needs a little bit of fine tuning, but nothing major. And then I'm going to glue that together with some pegs in between, I think. And what I think I'm going to do is use some copper tubing to cut down the length of it and open it up and use that as the, what would you call that, gilding maybe? But the accent pieces, so I'm going to put a spine of copper down the back of it and I think I'm going to cut some skinnier strips to run the inside of these ones across. Um, long term I think I'm going to put some copper rivets through these drawer handle holes and on the corners and 
just wherever I think it would look appropriate. So I think I'm going to cut a little piece of this off, probably like, I don't know, two, three inches, and then cut it down the length, try opening it up, and just see how hard it is to work with. So I cut a small piece of that copper tubing that I'm going to try to use to accent the edges and stuff and I'm gonna have to come up with a good way to hold it in place that was kind of a struggle and then I'm gonna have to be careful not to is that called bluing with copper tube I'm not really sure but this is my test tube so I'm gonna try opening this up and see how hard it is to work it and just kind of just mess with it I guess So the way I'm trying to open up this copper tubing is I just put a chisel down through it, spread it open a little bit, and then I think it's big enough now where I can get a, these pliers in there, but I just wanted to show these pliers because I ground off the teeth on a couple pairs so I can use them in tandem to bend metal without scarring it because normally they would have those little teeth on that but I got a couple pairs that I took those off of and that's what I'm going to try using on these well I just bent that tubing open and it seemed to work pretty good but now I gotta be careful with these little splinters that are hanging on there from when I was cutting it with the angle grinder so I'm just going to take it to the end wall and try to straighten it up with a wooden or maybe a rubber mallet it's probably a good idea if I take the file to it and just clean up these edges a little bit just to get them straight and make them a little bit safer Alright, well I've been working on sanding off the edges of after gluing them, and this thing's pretty close, close enough I think. The length is a little off, I think because, is it this one that's the double drawer? And these are all singles, so I'm not surprised it's off, but I'll center it on these spines here, and then I can just sand that off. That'll be covered and then also sanded the edges off pretty straight good enough I think because and by sanded off I mean by hand with a belt sander so it's not going to be perfect for sure and then I'm going after gluing this together I'm going to add metal strips on here so that'll kind of cover up the imperfections anyway and then on the inside, I sanded these down, those rough cut pieces. I haven't done this one yet, so I'm just going to sand these off, get them pretty good, and I'll end up sanding this whole thing off again with probably my orbital sander. But I'm just using the belt sander to take off the meat of it. So. I think probably next we'll be gluing it together once I get these fine-tuned a little bit more. I decided to sand this off before gluing it because then I it's a smaller piece to deal with. Could do it after. But so I'm just getting ready to glue the two halves of the lid together. And I just made some of those little pegs to glue in between them. This is actually a quarter inch oak dowel that I just cut in an inch long and then scored it with a hacksaw blade to give it more surface area for the glue. So I'm just going to do two per segment. So get that going. Alright, I got the 
pegs lined up and the holes drilled on the other side put it together and it fits then I can get the glue in there clamp it and uh, should be one step closer to this lid being ready well I pretty much got the lid to shape I haven't sanded it yet but I'm trying to figure out the sides and the top so the pieces I got are slightly too short to go all the way across but I have the trim that was from the sides of the desk that I think I can use on the corners if I notch those kind of like that just make it a little bigger on each side then this panel can fit into that and that will give me the length I need in order to finish that corner out. Plus it'll make a nice trim piece for the edge. So I think I'm gonna go take them over to a table saw and essentially cut it like that, widen that out a little bit, add one on this side so that this can fit inside of it. Cause I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna cut these little tabs off and then that will fit inside of that slot so that's my plan I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up having to cut this part off or I'll leave it in there or not but for now I'm just gonna mimic this slot that's already in it widen it out a little and add one on the other side so that those corners can fit inside of there and I don't have enough of this paneling to make it two layers thick all the way around. So I think I'm going to do one layer and then add some of that quarter inch plywood that I got a bunch of still. So first step, add those notches to here. I've been giving it some thought. I hope, I hope that's not a mistake, but I don't think so. I've been thinking about it. All right, well, I ran them all through the table saw. Got that notch cut in each side of there. And that's the right thickness for this to fit in there nice. So I think next I will cut all these little tabs off of the drawer pieces where they were interlocked just to square them up. All right, so I got this kind of put together a little and I think I'm going to raise the side from the bottom by about an inch and then I'm going to use this trim that was off the desk too and I'm going to cut that out so that it will fit in kind of like that along the bottom well here's the top of the desk and it's got a really nice leather top to it. It is kind of stained and messed up, but I'm not sure exactly how it's attached. It looks like it's just countersunk in there and I guess probably glued. But I'm going to take that out first. I'd like to line the inside of the chest with that if I have enough of it. We'll see what happens. Well, that wasn't too bad. I just had to get the corner up and it's thinner than I thought. It's probably a, I don't know, maybe a millimeter, two millimeters, or something like that. But uh, it's coming off pretty good, and it is just glued in there, so it shouldn't be too bad. Well, I've been continuing on on the lid, working on these corners. So I just cut out a piece out of the trim there, that square part, I cut out of it. And then that will fit the side of the drawer across the front. And it also reduced the distance this way. So the pieces I have will be long enough. And then I'm going to, I just shimmed it up so that the top was even with the lid top. So I'll just kind of 
draw the pattern on there, cut that off, and continue on with finishing out the lid. Because once the lid is complete, I'll know exactly what dimensions the bait, the bottom part needs to be. Because I don't want to start on that until this is dialed in. So I traced the top of the lid on the end cap of it, and I just cut it off with the, what is it, reciprocating saw? But I purposely did it a little bit offline there. For one, the blade isn't held very perpendicular, so if it cut at an angle, I'd have a little extra to work with. But also, it'll be easy to just sand that off if too much. I'd rather it be too big than too small, right? Alright, I'm ready to glue this. I just put some nails here just to kind of hold it together so it doesn't move when I try to clamp it to glue. But, got this pretty much sized. And then I also got this part that will go on the inside so this like that and this will fit on the inside of that so time to glue all right well i got the ends glued on and i've got the sides shaped and they're just tacked on there right now. I haven't glued them yet. I haven't done these yet. But I think before I attach those, I'm going to grind down this edge. Get it even. I think it'll be easier now than if I wait. So, I'm going to sand those off. So this piece was a piece of trim around the bottom of the desk. That I want to use for trim around the bottom of the treasure chest. So I needed to modify it a little bit, so I took the top off of it, and then I also cut it with the table saw, because I want to make it that shape. So I need to use the chisel, and hopefully it'll work, break off all these things, and clean that up. So. It'll work for the dimensions I need. And then this thicker part at the bottom, I think that'll be actually where I attach the bottom of the treasure chest. will sit on top of that, I think. So, it's not quite right, but I figure when I sand it down to clean it up, it'll get it pretty close to where that line is. All right, well, I've been working on breaking these fins off. I always like when you end up cutting through something like that. That's kind of neat. But uh, here's the pieces I broke off of the other ones. This is the last of the four. Just using a chisel and a hammer to kind of break these off and get them out of there. That's what you call the hard way, but that's part of the fun of doing stuff like this. Well, I got them all rough shaped out. It wasn't that bad. Cutting them took longer than breaking off the fins and all that. And some of them were a little more difficult than others. It just depended on the grain of the wood. Two of them were pretty easy. Two of them weren't. So I'm guessing those two were cut out of the same piece of wood. And the grain was very similar, but... Either way, got them like this, so not too bad. All right, well, I got the corners glued on this morning. I don't think the glue's completely dried yet, but I'm just about to glue this part on the inside here, so I just drew a line, and then I'm going to sand that off even before I put it on. I was thinking I was going to sand it off, after gluing it, but I don't want to mess up this nice edge, so I'm going to size it beforehand and then glue that in there. 
All right, well, I got the side reinforcements glued in there. Just put a quarter inch piece of the plywood and glued it to it just to bulk it up a little bit, and kind of tie everything together. Made sure I glued it so it's helping to hold that on. on this side I screwed up and cut it too short so I had to put a shim of another piece but well next I am going to use the front little middle drawer and I just want to beef up the front and the back so I'm going to cut this because it's a nice thick piece I'm going to cut that so I can fit it in right here one in the back mainly because that's where the hardware for the hinges of the back and then the locking like clasp thing in the front however I end up deciding to do that but just want to bulk it up to give it some meat on its bones there that'll help hold stuff together too all right well I got the inside of the lid done pretty much got that supporting piece put on there and all glued together and sanded down and the bottom of the corner trim I did put some shims in where they needed it just because there was a gap there but that'll be covered up later so now it is time to grind these corners down and smooth that out. Um, I waited to do this part because I wanted it to be in reinforced from the inside. Cause I don't. I hope that the sander doesn't just tear this piece off. So I'll have to be careful. But we'll find out. All right. Well, I got those corners sanded down. I just used a belt sander and ground it down till it was smooth. I'll fine tune it by hand some point in the future, but it worked pretty decently. So this is essentially pretty much complete as far as the wood part. I'll have to sand the entire thing and decide what I'm going to do on the inside because it's got little um, channels that the drawer bottom fit into so I don't know yet so I think it's time to continue on and start on the, the bottom part So the first thing I'm going to do starting on the bottom is to smooth this part out that will be the border around the bottom of it. And uh, this is where I just used the table saw to notch this out. And I just kind of clamped it here to hold it and use the belt sander to take down that rough part. And that worked pretty good so I'm just going to continue on with that. Well, I got the four pieces sanded. That actually went pretty easy. I'm kind of surprised. But it turned out good. All of them are essentially the same thickness. Just to clean up some of this stuff. And I did miss one little part right there, but I can get that off. Maybe chisel or sandpaper by hand. But cool. That wasn't as difficult as I was imagining it to be which usually doesn't happen that way. All right, well, I've been working on the sides in the front of the bottom part. This is the side where it'll be two pieces. And then the front and back is one solid piece, but I'm gonna put a strip of trim across that. I got these cut and sized and sanded and all good to go and everything is matching as far as lengths and everything so that's good uh, I just need to trim off the top a little bit I just left them a little bit long 
just so I could manipulate the pieces and then I'll I'll cut it off. So I think I'm ready to glue these. So I'll just do a couple more fine tuning checks, cut those tops even, make sure the height is good and get them set to glue. All right, I got the front and back finished gluing. I just put a piece of paper towel in between there so when I take it apart and it sticks to it, I can just sand that off, won't be a problem. So now I need to try and get it set up where I can clamp the side pieces in place while I glue them and try to keep it as square as possible. So I'm gonna start doing that. So I just made a little frame here so it'll hold it square while I glue it. Just tack those down. And so I'm gonna get the glue in there. Unfortunately, it's all gonna drip to the bottom, but I'll put the paper towel under it to absorb that so it doesn't stick down to the wood below it. And then glue it and cross my fingers. All right, so my idea on the lid is I'm going to add some copper rivets to fill in these holes on the top. And what I'm going to do is just use pennies, sand off the one side so that they're smooth looking. And to do that, I just took a three quarter inch paddle bit, countersunk it a little, and then just put the penny in there and rub it on sandpaper till it just takes off the stamp on one side. Just have to make sure I use the ones that are pure copper. I thought it was 1984 was when they changed that, but I guess it was slightly earlier. So, and then what I think I'm going to do, or what I'm going to have to do, is these holes are too big for the... This is 4 gauge, I believe. Um... And the hole that's already in there is too big. That was where the handle for the drawers were. So I'm just going to drill it out to m match this dowel. Glue it in there and then re-drill the hole the appropriate size for that. And uh, make some false rivets that don't go all the way through. But I can decorate the lid with I tried it just doing a rivet all the way through but I don't know I don't think I'm gonna do that I'm just gonna make it like most of the way through and then just glue, glue it in there so on the inside there won't be one it's possible to change my mind but I think that's how I'm gonna do it All right, well, I got those pegs glued. And so next, I'm just gonna cut them off with a hacksaw blade, and I think I can start sanding this thing, because I'm still waiting for the base to finish gluing, and I'm gonna have to do it anyway, so I think I'll cut these off and start sanding this down a little bit better. All right, the base has been glued. I still need to clean it up. Got to cut these little shims out of there. Clean up where it glued itself to that paper towel. But I think on the front, I'm going to take these pieces and cut them so this cut it so I can just get the edge off of there cuz that matches the the lid. I'm gonna run those down the front to line up with the with that trim on the lid. I'm gonna take these over to the table saw and rip it so that it's the right thickness. And I'll probably use the remaining piece to reinforce the inside of the front and the back. Well, I started sanding this. Just started on this piece. And 
was able to correct a little bit of the imperfections there. I'm just using 150 grit on this little piece of wood here and working it. And then I've got this half inch copper tubing that I'm going to use to do all the trim on this. And I just cut a piece just to try it out and mess around with it. So I'll run some down the spine of the top and then also on this part. This isn't narrow enough but the idea is it's going to go in in that little groove there and I'll put some along the edge of the lid all the way around it and all that and so these are sanded down so I'll drill that out with the correct size for this and then these will go in there so yep coming along nicely starting to look look a lot better after sanding but I got a ways to go I'm doing it all by hand and it's a little slow going but doing good so as I've been messing around with this trying to get the old finish off I realized I can just scrape some of this off That'll be a lot easier just to do that than to take it off with the sandpaper. It gets all plugged up with that with that finish. So that's cool. Okay, so the base is done gluing. Got those side panels done and sanded it down so it's even all the way around. And I think. What I'm going to work on next is the inside base. And I still have some pieces of drawer panels that I think I'm going to cut them and just run them along the bottom in here. And I'm going to put a layer of quarter inch plywood around the entire inside too. I still got a bunch of panels from the desk. So I think I will put those inside slats and then start on getting that quarter inch plywood sized up and then where the hinges will be I might have to reinforce that because that's not going to be super thick the lids looking good these two are the ones I sanded completely and then these ones are the ones I scraped off all that um, the finish off of it and then I just went back and sanded down the, those pegs. But scraping that off, I think, saved me a lot of time. So, yep. Okay, so I got those drawer panels cut and notched. Not perfect there, but they fit in there nice. They're not attached yet. I think I'm going to, before I attach it, I think I'm going to get the pattern for the quarter inch plywood. Make sure it all fits in there real nice. And I can, if there's gaps, I can fill them after the fact if I have to. So, cool. Well, I got the bottom panel sized and fitted and I think I'm going to leave the original finish on this piece it still looks real nice there's one little scratch there but not bad and then I think I'm going to add I'm gonna, well when I'm going to glue it I think I'm going to add a, some little nails just to kind of hold it together and I don't know why well it's starting to look like a treasure chest Coming along pretty good. Got the inside bottom gluing now. All right, well, I got the lid, top of the lid, sanded. 
did have to take off quite a bit on this one side here to even it up, but as I said before, I'm gonna have a copper um, strip covering the spine of it, but it's looking good. I'll continue on sanding the rest of it, but I'm happy those I was able to correct some of those where they line up better than they started out. So cool. I'm happy with that. And I got the inside part glued overnight last night. I'm thinking this panel I used with the original finish on it, the other pieces I have are like that too. So maybe I'll keep that original finish on the parts I put around the inside but first I need to do a strip to reinforce the front and back where like the hinges and the locking mechanism are gonna go but I think I'm going to put that quarter inch plywood first bulk it up a little and then add that strip and then I'm gonna use I think they're called um, strap strap hinges so they'll be like longer on one side so I might have to add something below that strip on the top but I think I'm gonna start on the inside quarter inch plywood liner all right well I got the panels for the inside cut and sized so now it's time to glue them in there. I'll sand them down after I glue it. I think that'll be easier. Alright, I got the liner glued in there with that quarter inch plywood. It's just kind of dusty and dirty right now. Most of that all come off. So next I think I'm going to add some pieces to the corner. Uh, let's see. Yes, I guess. Just to reinforce that corner. And these pieces actually, I think, came off of what I made this piece out of. I think it was attached to that piece previously. And then I'm also going to use some of these. This is where the drawer supports were. I'm going to cut that not sure exactly yet how tall to make it but that's going to be on the inside of the front and back just to reinforce where those hinges and the front latch will be and I also need to sand these down just a little bit they stick up just a little on the inside of a couple spots so I'll start working on that Alright, well I got the lid basically done. I do still need to do those rivet things. I'm not sure at what point I'll do that. Top and bottom line up pretty good. When I've got the back lined up, there is a small gap here, but I'm not sure if I'm going to put a little strip on the front of this to even that up. Or maybe if this is the front, I could just shim the shim the lock hasp so it's even I haven't decided 100% yet and then on the inside I got those reinforcements on the top and the front and back and then I think what I'll do next is start removing that finish on this dark brown part by scraping it. So I think I'll get started on that.
I got all of the bottom pieces scraped off and I'll go back and I'll sand them again but I just wanted to scrape it off because that's a thick coating of a finish on it that would just plug up the sandpaper and it'd end up taking a ton of sandpaper so now I gotta do the corner pieces and for that I just use a crappy pocket knife so I can get into those little tight areas there so start on that so I've been thinking about those copper rivets I want to mount on the lid and I've been working on getting these pennies ready to go to use as the copper burr but they're a little too small so I was thinking maybe I could use these pieces from the hardware from the drawer they got these cool little decorated pieces here I would just need to remove that part that holds the screw backing so what I did is I drilled that out so I ended up with just the flat part with the hole in it and then I made another one of these false rivets just by cutting a piece of this thick copper stick it through the hole there and then created a little false rivet and then I ended up soldering it from the backside on one of those little discs and I think that's a pretty good idea then I'm still using the original hardware from the desk and they're a little bit bigger. I think they might be bronze. I'm not sure. Brass maybe? I'm not sure what they're made out of. But they did solder. So I think I'm going to do that instead. I wasted quite a bit of time working on these. But that's okay. I think this is a better idea anyway. So here's the little handle hardware. Then I just put it in the vise and drilled out that back part until it came loose. And there you go. I think that's a cooler looking burr for that rivet than the penny anyway. So I'm going to continue on making the rest of those. Well, I got them all soldered up and ready. I think they turned out pretty good. I just need to take them inside and wash them off a little with a, some soap and water and a toothbrush to get that burnt flux off. But other than that, I think they turned out pretty good. A couple that got a little bent when I was making them. And hopefully that won't be an issue, but got them done. This poor penny I was using, it was a little worse for wear now, but it got the job done. Well, just a quick update. I started sanding. I did the bottom piece and the side panels. Still need to do the corners. Inside is pretty much done. Um, here's the hinges I'm going to use. They're just decorative T hinges and so I'm going to be mounted like that and since they're going to be hanging down I think I'm going to have to like put a reinforcement um, piece there so when it's attached on the outside it has something to bite into there but that'll be easy so now I'm just going to start sanding these this will be fun. So I got the box essentially sanded down everywhere. 
I didn't do a real super thorough job because I think some of these marks will give it a little character once I stain it again but I think it's time to get this front trim that I'm going to line up with that top of the box and I had just cut these off the front of some of the other pieces I had to the approximate thickness so I can mount it on the front here to line up with those so I'll get those cut to length and scrape the finish off it on and sand them down and get them glued on the front and I think I'm gonna glue it on the front of the lid too we'll see how it looks just the bottom I think it'll be a weird gap there so I'll probably add a little piece on the top so get started on that so I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with this little lip that exists here because of it being a little uneven and decided I'm just gonna use some of that quarter inch plywood and chisel the laminate off and while I was doing that on the inside it's got some writing on there wonder what that said originally kind of interesting though that like how in the world did that at what point in the process was that written on there all right that front piece I put on there has been gluing overnight it's time to take that off and sand sand that smooth okay so I got that little shim piece finished sanding and got it in place so I think next I'm going to make the little pieces that will connect this lower trim to the upper trim so I'm just going to cut out some little pieces scrape that finish off of them get them cleaned up and ready to glue on there and I got those little pieces in the front gluing and I made these little pieces to keep that trim line running. It's a little messy but I'll fix that once it's dried. And then I'll have a strip of copper running the length of that groove there. So just gotta leave it alone for now. Alright, so I think it's time to start on the copper uh, decorative pieces. I think I'm gonna start with the corners. I made a practice one on one of these pieces of scrap. Uh, what I do is I just cut a piece of the pipe, cut it down the side and then open it up flat. And then ended up making this that fits on top and bottom of the corners of everything. But I think I am going to do it a little bit different this time because some of the edges don't quite line up. So I think I'm gonna, once I get that flat piece, I'll work on these little tabs on each corner. So then that'll hold it in place and then I can do the pattern once it's set. And I believe it was three and a half inches is the length I went with on that one. It doesn't have to be exact because you're just going to cut it off anyway. And then use this pipe cutter
draw as straight a line as possible on the side of it. Mm, I forget how I did it. I didn't do. I tried it with the table, but it's too bumpy. So um, let's see how did I do it. I guess I can just do it like this. Cut it length on that line with the angle grinder. tube and cut down the side. I'm just going to drive a chisel down that line just to open it up a little. And try to keep the back part of the chisel centered on that line, which isn't very easy, but All right, I got this opened up a little bit. I guess about three-eighths of an inch or so. Careful of those grinder cuttings that stuck on the inside. Don't want those jabbing your hands. And they're not magnetic so you can't pick them up off the floor with a magnet. But next I'm gonna just open this up and I got these little channel locks. Two pairs of them where I just ground off the teeth on those the front of those so that when I'm working with metal, it doesn't scar it up as much as it as it would have with those little teeth on there. So I'm just kind of work on opening this up. And I got it opened up pretty much in a U shape. I tried not to scar it up. But now that it's open enough, I can just put it on the corner of my anvil and just hammer it open. Seven eighths wide, so that'll be enough to make that piece for the top. So, on that practice piece, I just made a small pattern to work out what shape I want to make it. So, I just transferred that leading edge to where those tabs are going to go down. So, I'm just going to cut those out now. So I got it, put it in place, and then I just um, traced around, and then I added in that tab that's going to go down the front of the outside corner, and I just labeled this back left top. So I'm going to cut the tabs out, and probably kind of rough cut around before I bend those tabs and get it set in place. basically got it the shape I want <clears throat> and I cleaned up some of these little tabs just rounded the corners off and filed them so it's pretty smooth now now I can just stick it on the corner and file it in place so I can follow the exact contours of that corner piece all right so I got this side filed down pretty good now I just need to continue on and get it sized up on this side 
All right, well, I finally finished all the corner pieces. I did a total of 16 of them. So four for the top, four for the bottom of the top four, and four on the bottom. So that was fun. Spent probably between 16 to 20 hours total on these. Basically the past week. So now I think I am going to start with the trim along the all the corners of the of the top here. And I also need to get those holes drilled drilled for these at some point. And yep. bunch of these made just about enough for all the corners and now I'm just gonna go back and clean up the edges with a file and I got some synthetic steel wool that I bought this a long time ago and I never really cared for it but it's working good for just cleaning up the copper get some of that little stuff off so continue cleaning this stuff up been continuing on getting some of these pieces finalized I got the top of the lid pretty much lined out alrighty well I got all the copper parts sized the way I want them not attached yet but I think it's time to move back to the box itself and sand it down and get it stained and uh, get these holes drilled and then while the stain is drying and stuff I can work on where I'm gonna put the holes to mount it, all this stuff That took forever. So I was going to start sanding, the final sanding before I started staining, but 
I remembered I wanted to put a liner on the inside of the lid made from that leather uh, surface that was on the top of the top of the original desk. When I pulled it off, it kind of cracked whatever seal it had on it, but that's all right. So that piece is. Eight, approximately 17 wide by about 15 across but I'm gonna cut a piece 16 by 18 and I'm gonna try to cut it so I can keep this little edging on the right about here and then on the sides too the pieces I cut I'll have it there so I'm gonna get started on that I got that leather pretty much the shape and size I want it here, but I'm going to set that aside for now. I'll glue it in there later. But, and I'm going to clean it with just a leather soap just to clean it up. But, got those, the trim part so that it's around the edges there. Now it's time to sand. Alright, well, I did a quick sanding all over everything cleaned up stuff and now I'm gonna start staining I'm gonna try out the red chestnut well I started staining and I think that color looks great just gonna apply it and wipe off the extra and let it dry overnight all right well I finished the second coat with that red chestnut and then I just went around with this true black using a little tiny paintbrush and then just did right along the edges of the trim and then used a paper towel to feather it out a little bit because when it was just the red chestnut it was just like a mono monotone monochromatic whatever so went back with that black just to add a little depth and give it a little more character so I think that'll look pretty good once the copper strips are mounted on there because when I put it on there before it just kind of blended in so I think once that trims on there it'll look good all right time to start putting the finish on the lid here I just plug these holes up with some paper towel because I don't want that getting down in there but I'm just using paste wax so Applying the first layer now. Well, I've completed the process of putting the finish on it. I did two coats of paste wax and polished it up. Now I think it's time to install these little accents. So I think I'm just gonna dip, dip the tip in a little bit of wood glue but with that little edge on there, I think it'll stay in good, but just a little wood glue to keep it in place. There we go. I'll go around and do the rest. Well, that went pretty well. No issues, they all Settled flush with the lid, so that's good. Alright, I'm ready to start putting the bottom pieces of trim on. And I'm going to start with the feet. So here's the corner pieces for the bottom. And here's the pattern I kind of started with when I made all those. So I just marked where I want the holes. I'll, uh, Mark those, then uh, use a punch and drill out the small ones for the nails. Here's the nails I'm going to use. And then I'm going to put these rubber feet on the bottom. So I'll also punch a hole in the middle uh, for that screw to go in.
Well, I got all the holes drilled for the base pieces. The ones pointing downward, I did all small ones to do nails, and then the side ones will be the alternating with the nails and the false rivets. Got the first piece put on. Turned out pretty good, I think. A little bit of a bubble here, but continue on with the uh, rest of the base. Well, I've been continuing on. I got all the bottom done all the way around. Got those front little pieces in and around the top of the top of the bottom. And just got these on the bottom of the top. far so good so now I'm gonna start on the front of the top I'm gonna do the top part here first and then the bottom because it's has to line up just right so I think I'll start on the corners of the top next looking good Things have been coming along nicely, just been making some steady progress. Got a lot of the copper done. I did run out of the little rivets, but I got, got it all ready to go on here. I ordered some that should be coming in in the next few days. Made it all the way around. Left a little gap there for that hasp to go on and then I'll make a little piece that will go where that bottom piece goes I also made some pieces for where the hit the handles will attach I gotta fine-tune those to make sure they fit with that reinforcement that's on the inside to make sure the screws line up with that back kind of the same thing I left space for the where the hinges will be so those will go in there basically so I didn't put any rivets or nails there I'll just drill the holes through the copper when it's time to mount those so I think next I'm going to start on the part for this rounded top. Probably make a little pattern with some cardboard and then figure out the, the holes. So, looking real nice I think. I think it'll really change it once I get those top pieces on which will be after I get these figured out. Well, I've been sorting out the pattern for the rivet holes, nail holes on the end piece here. and I don't really like how it ends up with these cutouts to make that corner, so I'm going to cut a strip that's six and a half inches long so that I can cut or shape into a crescent piece essentially where this line is across to where that line is and then it'll just cover up that all those 
things. I think that'll end up looking better in the end rather than having all those little cutouts to make that make that bend. So I'll cut out two pieces six and a half inches long. That should be enough that I can shape it to cover that. Well, I've just started attaching this top piece over the curved top here, and I'm glad I went. I'm glad I went with the little piece there to cover up those slices. I think it makes it look better, even though we're having a piece spliced in here. I think it'll end up looking better. So we'll just continue on with the nails first, get it kind of locked in place, and then go back with the rivet heads. Continuing onward, I got both of the tops of the end of the lids completed. So now I'm just working on that strip that goes along this ridge here got it marked out and the holes lined up basically on the center of the top is what I was trying to center it on and just going back and putting the nails in it so I'll need to make some more of those rivets and then I will start on this side almost done with the copper stuff then I will need to glue that leather lining inside the lid before I start working on the hinges and hasp and stuff on the front but everything's coming along nicely got that top ridge done covered up that seam pretty straight not perfect but looking good So now I'm moving on to get the handles, and this is a plate I want to put underneath the handle footprint itself. I'm going to start on that next, and uh, get the holes lined out where they want, where I want them to be for that little uh, back plate, I guess you could call it. Well, I got those little plates mounted to attach the handle, so I'm just going to drill some pilot holes for those screws and get it on there. Alright, well it's time to glue that leather piece inside of it, because the trim, I'm going to have the trim towards the back because I think that would be more likely to see it there than if it were in the front when you lift the lid. So I'm going to use this E6000. Hopefully that'll work good. Well, the leather liner is in place for the lid. It's not dry completely yet, but mostly worked out pretty good. Too bad that finish on the leather cracked when I removed it, or I did it incorrectly, obviously. 
I had been a little bit easier on it, it probably would have been better, but... Alright, well I got these little back plates attached for the hinges. Got that centered on that piece that goes down the inside. And then getting ready to attach this one. I just got it squared with the top like that. And then I'm about to drill the pilot holes for this. This one's off just a little, but it'll be fine. got those mounted they're pretty close to center line with those and now it's alive got the hinges mounted the handles mounted. All right, all done. I think it turned out really good. Also bought this little antique type lock to go with it. Thanks for watching. Till next time.